All right, so in this example, we're going to be piecing together everything that we've been learning about analyzing systems in the time domain by finding the total response of a system. So here's the system we're going to work with. It's described by this differential equation. We're told some initial conditions for the system, and we're also told that the input is the unit step function. And we are going to find the total response of the system. So this involves a lot of work because there's a lot of components and pieces to solving for the full solution y of t. So to do that, we're going to break it down into some parts. One of the parts that we need is the zero input response. So as a first step, let's just solve for the zero impulse input response of the system. That's pretty easy to do. We know that we just need to analyze the characteristic equation of the system. So by looking up here, I can figure out what that polynomial is, replace all the d's with the lambdas, and this is what we call the characteristic equation of the system. Solving for when it is equal to zero gives us the roots, so that's pretty easy by inspection to see that our roots are lambda one equals zero, and lambda two is a negative one, so these are my two roots. From these roots, I can form the characteristic modes. Since these are unique eigenvalues, the characteristic modes are pretty easy. It's just e to the lambda 1t and e to the lambda 2t. Since lambda 1 is equal to 0, that's e to the 0, which is just 1, so that makes that pretty simple. So these are the characteristic modes. I find the zero input response by taking a linear combination of them. So the zero input response y0 of t is c1 times the first mode plus c2 times the second mode. So this is our zero input response. I'm going to use some initial conditions to figure out what these unknowns are. Those initial conditions involve the derivative. So I'll go ahead and take the derivative of y0. That's easy to do. The derivative of a constant is 0, so that went away. And then the derivative of the next term, because of the minus here, we get a minus out front. So that is the derivative of the zero input response. Now I can go ahead and use some of my initial conditions. At time 0, what do we know about the zero input response? We know that it has to equal c1 plus c2, because I've replaced all the t's with zeros here. And this equals y at 0 minus. Remember, before anything has happened in our system, the total response is equal to the zero input response. For time 0 minus, we can tie those together because nothing has happened yet. So that is equal to the total response at 0 minus, which we're told in this problem is equal to 1. So I know that c1 plus c2 is equal to 1. What about the derivative? Well, if I evaluate the derivative at time 0, I just get minus c2, which again we know is equal to the total response at time 0 minus, because nothing has happened in terms of an input yet. And again, we were told that that's equal to 1. So now I know that c2 is equal to a negative 1. And if I go back up to my previous equation, the fact that c1 plus c2 have to add up to 1 tells me that c1 has to be equal to 2. So we've used our initial conditions here to solve for the unknowns, and now we know the exact form of the zero input response. It is equal to 2 minus e to the negative t, that quantity, times the unit step. Okay, so we've gotten part of this done. We now know the zero input response. The other piece that I need to know is the zero state response. To do the zero state response, I need to know what the impulse response is. So as a next step, let's solve for the impulse response of the system. So we're going to use our equation that we use all the time for the impulse response. That's our general equation. Here was the system we're working with. I'll just copy that down again so we have it available. Looking at this, on the left side, I see that this is a second order polynomial in d. If you multiply that out, you get d squared plus d, so n is equal to 2. On the right side, there is no second order term, so that means that bn or b2 in this case is equal to 0. So I know that this term is actually going to go away. I know that the quantity yn of t is a linear combination of the characteristic modes of the system. I already found the characteristic modes of the system. I know that the first one is 1 and the second one is e to the negative t. So forming a linear combination of those characteristic modes gives me yn of t. And now I can go ahead and solve for the constants k1 and k2 using my initial conditions. You might wonder, why do I need to solve for k1 and k2? Didn't I just do that, solve for c1 and c2? The answer is no, we didn't. The conditions on yn of t are a little bit different than the initial conditions on y0 of t, so we're going to get a slightly different answer. So I go ahead and take a derivative. That's an easy derivative to do. And now I can start thinking about what my initial conditions are. So again, for yn of t, 
the way I remember it is that all the initial conditions at time zero are zero except for the n minus one derivative at zero is equal to one. So for us, n is two, so two minus one will equal one. So that means our first derivative will be equal to one. So these are the general conditions that we always use. So I'm just gonna kind of box those. Specifically for us, like I said, since n is equal to two, this means that two minus one is equal to one, which means the first derivative, so the yn of zero, that first derivative, is going to be equal to one. Everything else will be equal to zero. So now I can go ahead and use these on the left. So let's go ahead and replace t equal to zero. When I do that, I just get this quantity right here. I set it equal to one, and that tells me right away that k2 is equal to a negative one. What about my other conditions? All the other conditions are zero. So if I come over here and replace t with zero, I know that that has to equal zero. So that tells me that k1 plus k2 is equal to zero. I just solve for k2, it's equal to negative one, so when I solve for k1, I get one. So note that these constants, k1 and k2, are a little bit different than the c1 and c2 we had because the constraints, the initial condition constraints on yn of t are different than the constraints on y0 of t. All right, so we now have that. And so now we know exactly what yn of t is. So now I can plug into this right here. So what is pd of yn of t? Well, for our example, the polynomial p of d is equal to d plus 2. Here's p of d right up here. So I need to evaluate d plus 2 times y, I'm sorry, 1 minus e to the negative t. So this is really just the derivative times this plus 2 times this. Taking this derivative is very simple. <clears throat> I get e to the negative t plus 2, I'm going to distribute the 2, times 2e to the negative t. So I get some like terms I can combine here, e to the negative t minus 2e to the negative t. So I combine like terms and I get this. So now I know what this term is in my expression for h of t. So I can piece all these things together. bn was equal to 0, so I don't have an impulse term. All I have is 2 minus e to the negative t times u of t. So now I have now solved for the impulse response. So we're almost there. The next thing we need to do is use this impulse response to compute the zero state response of the system. And we will do that in the next video. We'll continue this example in the next video.